Have you heard of the Grey Witch? Who hasn't? Locals have been going on about her since those hikers disappeared last month. I heard she stays in the forest, close to the trees looking for people to pick on at night. No, not at night. She only comes out on foggy days. Well, why is that? So you can't see her, but you can still hear her whispering through the mist. lives in a cabin at the foot of the mountain. She doesn't chase you. She lures you in. You have to go to her. Well, someone ought to go out there and find her then. See what all the fuss is about, you know? <laughs> Pass. I'm good. <laughs> then I guess we'll never know. Fine by me. So what other spooky stuff do they talk about out here? So I got a little carried away with the intro to this video, but I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, this video is the first in a three-part series that I'm putting together in partnership with Epidemic Sound, all about sound design and how to improve the sound design of your films. And I wanted to start it out simple with this first video and just dive in with 10 random tips for better sound design. You all seem to like these 10 tips for XYZ type videos. But before we get into that, I wanna take a brief minute to tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is of course Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is without a doubt the best place to get sound effects for your films. It's a massive, seemingly endless library of super high quality sound effects. Everything from cool atmospheric drones and whooshes to just practical sounds like footsteps, twigs breaking. And even though it is a massive repository, they have a really practical, easy to use tagging system that makes it easy to narrow down that search, sift through those thousands of results and find exactly what you're looking for. So when I'm searching for some footsteps to put in the video, I can easily sort to running footsteps, walking footsteps, or sort it by tags based on the type of surface that you're walking on, dirt, brick, you get the idea. I've been using Epidemic for I think the last like three or so years and they've been my go-to source for all of my sound effects since then, so I cannot recommend them enough. They have both a personal plan and a commercial plan, so if you're interested, there will be a link in the description where you can get a 30-day free trial of either one and also let them know that I sent you. So all that being said, let's move on and talk about some tips for improving your sound design. The first one is a little heady, but still very important, and it's just to have sound design in mind before you actually get to the sound design. The first step to sound design that really flows and complements the other elements of your video and the project as a whole is just being able to like hear the sound design while you're cutting the clips and working on the visuals. And you can even use markers on your timeline to make note of different sounds that you might want to add in the future. One specific situation where it really helps to think about sound design before you actually get to the sound design is transitions. You'd be surprised how often the right sound is really the key to a smooth transition between two clips. A lot of the time for me, this means aligning like the climax or the high point of a sound effect right where the cut is. There's a quick sequence of a few shots in the intro to this video where I'm running through these trees on this hilltop and I've used this kind of branch rustling sound effect in the edit and aligned the loudest point of those sounds right on those quick cuts. So it helps to kind of motivate and smooth out those transitions between those shots. Another way you can use sound design to smooth out the flow of your cuts is by using a J cut. And this basically just means that you bring in the audio of a shot before you see the visual. To do this, I just extend the audio out a bit to the left on the timeline and then gradually fade it in. And being able to hear the next shot before you see it like this really helps so much for making that cut feel motivated and flow smoothly. So in the intro to this video, there's a locational transition where we go from a forest to an exposed hilltop. And I bring in the ambient wind noise from that hilltop 
while that forest is still on screen. So you can kind of feel it coming and it helps to make that cut between two different locations feel less jarring. And that's just one example. If you look at the timeline of the intro of this video, you'll see that I'm using J cuts pretty much everywhere. Next up, let's talk a bit about variety, which basically just means making sure you're not using the exact same sound effect over and over again throughout an edit. This is another strong point for epidemic sound because you'll oftentimes find a bunch of different versions of the same sound effect when you're searching for something. So if I search up whoosh or like footsteps on grass, then we'll see dozens of different results and varieties of that sound. But this could also mean taking a sound effect you already have and have used multiple times on the timeline and making it sound a little different each time by maybe changing its speed, adding some filters. Actually, while we're on the topic, let's talk about some different ways to modify your sound effects and make them sound different. One of my favorites is Parametric EQ. It's a fantastic tool for bringing back a lot of kind of fullness and depth in vocal audio. So this is what it sounds like without it. And you can hear that this microphone, especially considering that I'm just using like an on-camera mic right up here, is not going to be capturing the full range of audio. So that parametric EQ effect is great for bringing back that sound that your mic doesn't capture. Normally, I'm just using this to make the voices sound a little more crisp and full, but in the intro to this video, I actually used it to make the voices sound consistent. So I had three different audio tracks from three different voice actors recorded completely separately and they needed to sound like an organic conversation. So I used this effect to boost up the bass of one and bring down the higher frequencies of another and make them all sound more consistent. Another very versatile way to modify your sound effects is just by changing their speed. And this can completely change a sound. In the intro to this video, there's a sequence where I use this ambient forest audio that just has like a bunch of birds and insects kind of buzzing around in the background. And I've slowed that down to about 50% speed. And that makes it sound much more kind of mysterious and unnatural. And again, that's just one example. I use this technique all of the time throughout all of my videos to make certain sounds come across more dreamy and atmospheric. And finally, a third way to modify your sound effects and another tool that I use to create a dreamy atmosphere in a lot of my work are the high pass and low pass filters. High pass will cut out the lower frequencies of your audio and just leave those higher pitches and low pass will do the opposite, cutting out the higher frequencies and just leaving the bass. And these can each create some really interesting effects. The high pass filter is great for making audio sound like it's coming out of like a speaker or a radio or a cell phone. And I use this a lot for like weather reports or phone calls, just anything where I need to make the audio sound a little crunchier, like it's coming kind of second hand out of another speaker on camera. And then the low pass filter makes the audio sound kind of muffled and makes it fade away into the background. And you can use this to make a kind of dreamy atmospheric vibe or to tone down a distracting audio track. So I use this a lot on the music in the intro to this video. So there are a lot of points where I wanted the music to kind of sink away a little more and make some more room to focus on the voiceover. So I used this low pass filter in varying degrees to kind of tone it down and make it fade away into the background a little more. And just while we're on the topic of the music in the intro to this video, one perk of Epidemic that came in really useful on this particular project was being able to download the different stems of the music. So I love the audio track that I found for this one, but it had this one instrument that was kind of distracting on a certain part of the track. So I was able to download the individual stems and just cut that out and make it flow better for this video. So that's pretty useful. But let's get back to sound design and talk a bit about adjusting the master volume. And this is located at the bottom left corner of your timeline in Premiere and will allow you to adjust the volume of the entire project. As you're editing and you pile on more and more sounds, the total volume of your project just gradually increases and eventually it's going to start peaking. So if you keep an eye on the audio meters at the right side of the timeline and you see at any point in your video that those start to clip into the red, then that audio is now peaking and it's going to sound compressed and terrible and distorted once you export it. So if that's the case, you can just go lower that master volume down a bit to prevent it from peaking 
during your video. And now that we're nearing the end of the sound design process, one incredibly important final step before you upload any project is to make sure the audio sounds good across different audio options, like different speakers and headphones. You can do all of your sound design using the highest quality, most expensive professional audio mixing headphones under the sun, and it will not change the fact that most people are going to watch whatever you make on their phone. Maybe their laptop, probably their phone. So before I finalize a project, I'll just play the video back on my phone to make sure it still sounds okay. But this could also mean just plugging in some cheap headphones and giving it a listen through those. You get the idea. Just make sure that it still sounds all right. And it doesn't need to sound perfect, but just make sure you're not losing anything important. Finally, you all know that I like to try and end these videos off with a final kind of overarching big brain mindset tip for whatever it is we're talking about. And this video is no different. So let's talk about using sound design to tell your story. A lot of travel filmmakers seem to view sound design as like this final boring but mandatory detail, just going through and adding a few sounds here and there to correspond with the visuals. But in reality, sound design is this entire world of new opportunities to tell a story and create atmosphere. In the intro to this video, the dialogue and the voiceover added in tells the entire story. Without that, it's just a minute and a half of me walking around in the woods. Without the sound design, the story doesn't really exist. So next time you start on sound design, instead of looking at your footage and asking like, what should I do for sound on this one? Try and look at the big picture of your entire project and rather ask yourself, what can I do with sound on this one? Like what opportunities are there to tell the story and really add to this project through the sound design? And when you do that and you start asking those questions and really digging into the intricacies and the nuance of sound design, you'll realize just how much you can do with it and just how much you can elevate your work to the next level and your work will honestly never be the same. Yeah, there's so much to learn about sound design and I hope this video has given you a solid like jumping off point to get into it and really start learning some new things about sound. All that being said, another big thank you to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this project. There will be links in the description where you can get a 30 day free trial of either a personal or commercial plan. So if you wanna try it out completely free for 30 days and I cannot recommend it enough. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to show your support by leaving a like, maybe even a share, and I will see you in a couple weeks with another sound design video. So subscribe to this channel to make sure you don't miss it, and I'll see you there.